Good day, my dear viewers. Uh, a friend has sent me a link to this beautiful website. It's called RussianFarmland.com, support of agricultural business for foreigners. And I would like to take a closer look at it, since my channel does a lot to advertise opportunities in Russian agriculture, in farming, ranching. This video will serve as a word of advice against thrusting yourself into Russian realities um, unprepared, let me put it this way, because Russia does have a lot of potential. Russian agriculture has huge potential, humongous potential, let me put it this way. But you have to go in very carefully so as not to become a victim of some unscrupulous folks. And I will use this website as an educational aid. What this website does, it offers agricultural properties of different kinds in Russian regions and something that strikes me as a local, as a person who knows Ivanov region up close, is the price of what they're offering. So they're offering this lot of 4,300 hectares, 10,750 acres for 180 US dollars per hectare. Or $72 per acre. Now, they are aware that farmland in the West, in Canada, in the States, in the United Kingdom, in Germany, is very expensive. There are a lot of uh, different restrictions and payments to be made to the state to be able to farm. So, they just present Russian farmland in the same light. They think that if something of this kind costs a thousand dollars an acre, for example, I've just taken this number out of the left field completely, a price of $180 would seem to be very cheap, so this whole thing would seem to be a bargain, but it is not a bargain. My dear friends and viewers, it is not, most definitely. And to prove that these are not empty words, I would refer you to my videos from 2000. 19 boars in Ivanova. They're still on the channel. You can watch them. I'll just show you a tiny little bit, tiny little piece of it, and you will understand why. And here we have a true South African farmer. Here he is, Senor Matthias Wiegelt. Senor. Her. Her. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, the village of Savina. And all these lands that go straight down to the forest, they are all available for cattle farming, for pig farming, so... Crop farm. So, Matthias, could you please say a couple of words? What's your opinion of what you see? What I'm seeing is a small village on top of a little ridge, and then in the distance you see a lot of open area, space. My big question first of all, of all is, if we get heavy rains, is it going to flood there or not? One will have to look at that, but otherwise it's area to be developed. Right. It looks right. like it hasn't been used for many years. So there is potential. There should be good, big potential. So. Excellent, excellent, thanks. And uh, please take a guess how much this land was going to cost Matthias uh, to develop. To be completely straight with you, we're still talking with Matthias, he's a good friend, but he hasn't stayed in Russia and he didn't pick up this land in Ivanova, but they were offering this land for free, ladies and gentlemen, for free, like literally for free. Not only that, they were offering houses for free, not palaces, mind you, but houses that could have been fixed up, uh, repainted, uh, remodeled, and they were available for, for living. There is a huge campaign in Russia, it's been going on for years, of uh, revival of agriculture, revival of agricultural resources of all kinds. So, uh, first off, as a foreigner, you cannot own agricultural land in Russia. It's against the law. But if you have serious plans to farm, to develop it, you can get either for free or for a nominal amount. There is no reason to buy anything, especially if you just arrived to Russia doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So what these people do, they're just uh, trying to take advantage of uh, somewhat gullible. I'm not saying that the Western farmers are stupid or Western investors are stupid. No, 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 of course not. But they are not used to Russian realities. And one of the things that is in abundance in Russia is land, agricultural land, 
There are tens of millions of hectares ready for development, available for anyone who wants to take up this uh, noble business, this noble occupation, agriculture. It's completely unnecessary to buy something in Russia. Some people say that um, Russian real estate is cheap because, uh, say, for example, uh, 400,000 U.S. apartment in Moscow, a similar apartment would cost $2 million in New York. But Moscow is not New York. You cannot really compare two places on two different sides of the planet. M Moscow is prosperous. The level of income, the level of salaries in Moscow is lower than in New York. So a $400,000 property in Moscow, I have never met a single Russian, never, would consider Russian real estate cheap. And I can tell you that I was ahead of a successful mortgage brokerage in the noughties. Uh, we sold 85 franchises all over Russia. We were a successful network of people. We were helping people to get mortgages and conduct uh, real estate uh, transactions because the law at the time was still not completely polished. So I know what I'm talking about and I uh, follow Russian real estate very closely. And let me show you a bright red sign that you are dealing with people you should not be dealing with. I'm not calling them frauds necessarily. Uh, you will probably get the land that you paid for. It's just that land is incredibly overpriced. And I just want to comment on the team uh, of this company. That's a local commentary, because there are some things that just strike me as manipulative and uh, somewhat ridiculous, to be honest. The CEO, he is visionary, black background, smiling, looking successful. Very prosperous looking young man. Here is the co founder, Amanu Galkov, and he is photographed uh, next to a helicopter. And in Russia, don't you know, if you want to appear successful, you just need to stand next to a helicopter and get yourself photographed, and you basically arrived. That's, that's what it means. You arrived if you're standing next to a helicopter, even though, uh, you know, it's really not your helicopter, it's just it's from Heli Club. Yeah, it's a company that does helicopter taxi thing. Here is another guy, director of the office in Krasnodar. Krasnodar is a beautiful place, very rich region. But it's definitely not a place for a foreign farmer to start at. Since you don't know the country, don't know the language, don't know the laws, don't know, don't know the moors, not familiar with the culture, you would have to start in central Russia, which is the most accommodating and has... A dozen of large cities, including Moscow, of course, which would consume your products gladly. Then they have this gentleman. I don't know whether he exists or not, but Russians think that if they have a foreigner, any kind of foreigner, on the website, it, it, it means that, uh, you know, you should trust them for some reason. And there is a guy in charge of building permits uh, and cadastral works and all that. So, um, yeah. Just be careful, be careful, my dear foreign friends and future countrymates, buyer beware.